Good morning, Eric. Good evening. Great. Well, thank you for to the to your teacher, to your principal, especially uh, because he accepted our offer to come and speak to you. My name is Victor Jevet, and with me is Elena Balta. We are two of the directors from an organization called Nikola Tesla Educational. So we're going to talk uh, about some stuff, and you'll find out some key words. Epicenter, the center of something. This area was actually part of an incredible development in our history of Hamilton. And it's all around us, and yet almost none of us know any about it. So we're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about, and you can see up there, named Nikola Tesla. That's a picture of him right next to me here. We're going to talk about something called a group of men that are referred to as the Five Johns. Ironically, all of their first name was John. That's why they're going to be doing that. We're going to see a couple of things. I have a potato here, and I have a light bulb. Do you think that this potato can light this light bulb? What do you think? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay, well let's see if it can do that. I'm going to plug the light bulb into the potato. Ready? One, two, three. Uh, nope. There is a theory, and yes, there is a little bit of chemical energy, but let's see if we can do it something different with a different potato. So this one's not magical, right? There's no power in it. There goes light bulb. No big deal. All right. What do you think if Mrs. Balta takes that potato that she's got right in her hand, and you want to grab the light bulb? And this light bulb, what do you think? Do you think it has power? You think so? Why? Let's see. Three, two, one. It has power. Okay. Now that's magic, isn't it? Well, you will learn magic. What is magic? Can anybody tell me what is magic? Yes. Magic is cool and fun. Well, a little bit better, yes? Magic is something that just works without a... But, 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 oh, without a but. Okay, so let me define a little bit further magic. Magic is something that has an explanation for it, but we don't know what it is. So the magicians, when they do something, there is an explanation to it, but you just have to know the, the trick. So we'll get to this, okay? By the way, that light bulb that she was holding, that is a fluorescent light bulb. You will learn a little bit later on if you follow along and we'll have some questions and we'll have some prizes for you as well, okay? You will also learn how this works. And I will teach you and then we will see if you kids have the power in you to turn on a light bulb. So let's get going and please follow along. Questions are acceptable, all right? So the first point is this, that we give awards. And this school has received awards for the grade eight graduating class. It is the Nikola Tesla Award is given to a student who is innovative thinking outside of the box, not necessarily the highest mark. We've given 175 awards already in the last couple of years, okay? And now, just a couple of days ago, I learned that the student by the name of Samuel from Hamilton just received the $10,000 scholarship. He is the second one. The first one came from Burlington and Civil Master University. So all of these awards and these presentations are all for you, the students, to be inspired. These are the type of awards we give. Uh, the certificate to the schools, okay, in grade eight. Now, Nikola Tesla, he was the promoter of eco-friendly. He was really, one of your first green energy people, all right? Uh, so he talked about things that we should not be using energy to produce power. His power was electricity. He talked about we should get rid of 
the coal, the fossil fuels, because what they do, when you burn it to produce power, you use energy, and at the end of the day, you pollute. All right? He talked to us that power is everywhere, and it's an unlimited quantity. And had we only listened to him, we would not be using some of the, the stuff. Now, a question for you. What you see up there is very similar to this. Can anybody tell me what this is? Yes. Electric power box? Close. Right all the way in the back. Over here? Electric power cell? That's correct. It is a motor. So this is a power motor. This, it was mentioned right here about a saw. It comes off one of my power tools. So if you know what a table saw is, it's anything like that. It, the, if you run it backwards, it actually is a generator. If you spin it from the outside, where on the wire end, you'll get power. So it works reverse. So it's both ways. It generates power and uses power to produce something that we want to do. What do you think this is? Anybody? Yes? Correct. It is electric motor. This happens to be the motor from my furnace. Now my furnace runs on natural gas, so you think my furnace will work on gas? Well, without a motor to circulate the heat around the house, it does not work. Anybody know what this is? Huh. Yes, right back there. No, no, this little thing in my hand. Yeah, it is a BlackBerry, you're correct. It is a BlackBerry, it's a cell phone. It's a mobile device. You will learn that all of these devices are rooted directly into our great old friend, Mr. Tesla. What do you think this might be? Back there. It's an electric generator. It's like a generator, motor. This is actually Nikola Tesla's motor that he patented in 1884. But I want you to listen to some of the uh, presentations we have. We have some uh, videos in here, so here's one. In 1891, a Serbian scientist demonstrated his latest inventions before an awestruck audience at Columbia University. Tubes held in the hand of Mr. Tesla, a reporter wrote appeared like a luminous sword in the hand of an archangel, representing justice. Nikola Tesla was already famous. The scientist whose experiments with electricity were destined to transform daily life in the 20th century. We live in an electrical world. We take it all for granted. We have light bulbs, we run our refrigerator, our air conditioners, our electrical motors, all of that is all directly back to Tesla. A hundred years ago, he pointed the way toward robots, radio, radar, remote control, the wireless transmission of messages and pictures. He dreamed of harnessing the wind and the sun to make free energy available for everyone. When you think about electricity, you think about Edison, but Tesla was just much more of an original American than, than Edison. Tesla had a lot of obsessions and odd phobias, and yet he was enormously popular and uh, celebrated. They did not stop him. At the turn of the 20th century, Tesla was acclaimed. Millions of Americans knew his name. But only decades later, he was forgotten by all but a few. He doesn't have a disciplined imagination. He has a fertile imagination. And so, He's, he's kind of crazy. Oh, he's a genius. No, no doubt about it. But he's an idiosyncratic genius. His luxuriant imagination was the source of his genius and the cause of his downfall. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to think big. 
you know. So listen to this gentleman, he's a, he's a professor. If you could simply turn off all of Tesla's contribution, modern civilization would come to a grinding halt. We would be thrown back literally a hundred years into the past, back into the days of steam engines and, and steam locomotives. That's the contribution that Tesla made. In some sense, he's the architect. In some sense, Tesla is the architect of modern day civilization. So, that's pretty profound. He steps on so many things. But what if there was no Tesla? What if we took away all his inventions? That's what he talked about. So no Tesla means we don't have any power. Now let's be honest, somebody would have come up with the invention, but this is the man that did. So he came up with that. None of you here, with the exception of your teachers, recall 2003. In 2003, we had a massive power blackout. We lost power for over a week. There was no electricity. And those are your skylines of various cities. And as you can see, to walk, they had lanterns so you can see. In other words, there's no light, all right? If there's no light, none of your electronic devices operate. They're all dead. If you cook by electricity in your home, guess what? There's no electricity. Your fridge, your freezer, all of that is gone. So you imagine life without that, and that's what your teachers lived through. Some of them may have been very young at the time, but that's what we lived through, and I lost, I didn't go to work for a whole week because my, my work did not have any power. So let's listen to this Dr. Tesla, is that he was, I think, cheated of much of his well-deserved fame and also happiness. He was in on the discovery of radio. He was experimenting with x-rays before the announcement of the discovery of x-rays. He pioneered the AC motor. He realized that everything you see around us, the lights in this room, the lights of New York City, are all energized by AC motors and AC power. So in other words, Tesla laid the foundation of a second industrial revolution. So think of this. We're talking about the foundation. How many of you watch how a house is built? All right, what do you think? Is a house built on the grass? Do they start building the house on the grass? Or what do they do? The first thing that they do, right, is they dig a hole, they get a solid foundation, and then they build the house. Otherwise, the winter and our temperature would destroy the house in no time flat. So the importance to build a house is to have a foundation. Tesla laid the foundation for our current life and society as we know it today. So we basically talked, I mentioned up there, you see, we, when you came in, it was Hamilton, the electric city, and you call it Tesla and the five Johns. So who are the five Johns? Well, they are five gentlemen all, as you can see, their names are up there, but the key one I want to point out is John Patterson. John Patterson was an incredible visionary. He discovered Tesla's uh, technology and he brought together some of the other men. And uh, John Gibson, who is pictured actually in that uh, picture over there, you'll see another. You'll see him up there later. Uh, they went on and built a company called the Cataract Power Company. This is John Patterson. He was an incredible visionary. But what did he want? Wanted to do was he wanted to bring power, electrical power, to Hamilton. And he first saw it in Niagara Falls, and all of them at that time said, you can't do this. Electricity only travels a short distance. Well, that's DC electricity. That's what was being used at the time, and you heard in one of the comments, Edison. Edison was behind direct current, DC. That is your battery-operated devices, and electricity all goes in one direction. AC, on the other hand, flicks back and forth. That's why it's called alternating current. So it was totally impossible until, sorry, until they consulted with Tesla. And this it, picture that you see over there and on, on the screen tells us how the five Johns of Hamilton consulted Nikola Tesla and he gave him the approval that their plans to send power over a great distance will work. So who is Mr. Tesla? Well, as we can see, it was all impossible 
but in 1888, Tesla put together the whole system of motors, generators, transformers to be able to send power over great distances. Uh, that was 1888. He formed a partnership with a gentleman by the name of John, uh, George Westinghouse. And this building right here, you see, is not too far from this school, it's just a little bit over, okay? This building was being built, uh, or I should say, this specific building. George Westinghouse came to Hamilton in 1897 because he needed one important thing, and that was power. This is the building today, and this is Mrs. Volta in front of it. Yes, you have a question. No, that building is not getting knocked down. That building is actually being rebuilt, regenerated, okay, and repurposed. It used to be an office tower for Westinghouse, and that's very symbolic. What happened in the 18, late 1890s, early 1900s is starting to happen here again. Yes, you have a question? The building is standing, the building is there. They're just fixing it all up and bringing it back to an office. So this building is very symbolic, and I use the term epicenter. We, that's where everything was rooted in Hamilton. Question back there. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, yes, I'm seeing one of your teachers saying yes. So let me just move on a little bit and we'll get uh, so that we make sure we get through this presentation, but at the same time I want to ask a few question. But because, as I said, epicenter, this is the center, the area that developed immensely as a result of Hamilton getting power. So every, uh, the, you'll see these, there's a couple of pictures over here. That is the DePue power generating station, and clearly it was Tesla's discovery that helped to build that power generating station. This is the generating station. It functions today. Those pictures were taken by me last year. This building here is on Victoria Avenue, right by the train tracks. So this is ground zero. This is the first building in all of Hamilton that got electricity. So that's why we basically talk that this is the epicenter area around where you live is literally where everything started happening. And the date on this was August 25th, 1898. That is a magical date. We're now 120 years later since we got power, electrical power in Hamilton. How did it all happen? Well, it was a cataract power company that did it. So these guys uh, brought power they were very powerful at the time. Electricity did not come, a lot of people think, uh, first from Niagara Falls. No, it, for Hamilton, it came from St. Catharines. And Hamilton was the first city to accomplish this. These are, you can see there's a couple of lakes up there, Lake Moody, Lake Gibson. They're next to the Welland Canal. They get power, water from the Welland Canal. And as you can see, there's Brock University. So this is where this power generating station is. This was an incredible accomplishment. So it was noted that it would be a red letter day in history. So important. And yet we don't know nothing of it. So this changed Canada forever. When these guys did this, not only changed Hamilton, but this defined Canada as a progressive society and they used 22,000 volts to accomplish it. Unheard of power at that time. <coughs> Hamilton then got the nickname, as it says up there, Hamilton the Electric City. And if you take a look, underneath the emblem on your right hand side, there's a small little tower. That is the last standing tower that brought power to Hamilton, and it's this plaque is right next to it. So it's still it's being recognized. So the impact on Hamilton was incredible, especially in the first decade. Population grew like crazy. We had immigrants from all over the world coming into here, and businesses were established then. You see some names up there. Remember I mentioned Westinghouse? Well, Westinghouse, was a, this was their first international plant. 
all of the major companies came to Hamilton. Yes, I can see a hand over there. West, you remember Westinghouse, eh? Good. There's a lot of people that worked in Westinghouse for, for a long, long time. But it just gives you an idea of some of the companies that came in here. Some of them still exist. The Basco is AMD right now, but it's still around. Other uh, companies moved out or have been sold off. Stelco, of course, is trying to come back. So Hamilton became the heartland. We were the center of most of the industry, and it was all being developed right here. And guess what? You all know about the big city, Toronto. We had a beat by almost a decade. Eight, they got power in 1906, and we had power in 1898. So when you have power, you get a lot of prosperity. How many of you would like to drive a car? Hmm, so pretty soon some of you are gonna be teenagers, right? There's your first teenage driver in all of Canada. It was right here. That's John Moody Jr. You know how in some countries around the world women can't drive cars? Well, the first lady driver in all of Canada, Mrs. Moody, it was right here in Hamilton as well. So a lot of prosperity. We had the first automobile club in all of Canada. They had a complete network of something called radios. They were like one, uh, like a railroad car, like a, like a train car, but it was one vehicle and they had power. That's what they needed electricity for. They ran on rails and they had a whole network of that. They even had electric engines that were built here to run trains. In some places, their trains run electricity, not like ours, and there is talk that the GO train a lakeshore line that comes through Hamilton will someday be electrified. Of course, there's the industry. We had major growth, and it gives you some timelines of the dates. You can see 1897 was when Westinghouse came in. Other companies like Procter & Gamble, all big American companies came in here. The impact was incredible. It attracted a lot of people. And these people came from, as I said, all over the world, and a lot of community was established. If you go down Barton Street, just look at the age when these churches were built, and you will start realizing they were all built in the early 1900s. My own community, the Serbian Orthodox Church, was established in 1913, because there were enough of them here. So the impact, as we mentioned, was incredible on Hamilton. And it all started with 1888, then 1896 is when John Patterson and consulted with Tesla, that's what this is thing right here. 1898 power came to Hamilton, and as you say, the rest is history. So who was Nikola Tesla? Well, let's take a look a little bit briefly about him. Well, he was born in Europe in 1856, 1884. He came to North America, in the States, of course. Uh, he met his idol, Thomas Edison there, and he went on. He went on to develop 315 patents that they have found. They are still looking for more around the world, and he passed away in 1843. Can anybody tell me what is a patent? Patent. Yes. Very correct. So it's when you develop something and you want everybody to know this is yours. So you put a patent on it so nobody else can use it and you can make a lot of money out of it if you hold the right patent. All right? So this is things that he developed. But let's listen to this little pre uh, presentation. Nikola Tesla. In a museum in Belgrade, Serbia, there's a little plated sphere that rests atop a marble pedestal. What's inside, you may ask? Pure science. Or in other words, the ashes of Nikola Tesla, a Serbian-American scientist who is the most underrated inventor of the 19th and 20th century. At a time when electricity was still a luxury, Tesla researched it 
independently contributing to every aspect of science and technology. Take his rotating magnetic field and alternative current motor. Those allow us to send power across entire nations without building substations every 1.5 kilometers and with much less danger than old direct current methods. Though vocally deployed by the likes well of Thomas on. Edison, electricity arrives in our homes this way, even today. Another great invention, the Tesla coil, creates high voltage electricity at high frequency. With this, you can do cool things like powering light bulbs without wires. Basically, this idea laid the foundations for all modern wireless technologies. Today, Tesla coils are still used to ignite the gas lamps that light up the streets. Among other things, Tesla discovered the resonant frequency of the heart, invented many electric gadgets, remote control, fluorescent, and neon lights, which he then had bent into letters. He recorded radio waves from outer space and had a hand in the field of robotics. Once he built a machine that, when switched on, created an earthquake nearly demolishing an entire neighborhood. Well, that one was a bit dangerous. Tesla was a true genius, he spoke eight languages, memorized entire books, built functional devices straight from his imagination without writing anything down. He was 200 centimeters tall, popular with the ladies, but had a lifelong dedication to science. Every day he worked from 9 to 6, stopping for dinner at exactly 8, and then resumed his work, often until the middle of the night. Having been celibate for 86 years, broke and alone, Tesla passed on. Having made so much of our current technology possible, Nikola Tesla and his contributions were largely forgotten. But the legacy of true geniuses, though, never really fades, right? They just take some time off inside a gold-plated sphere. So, you, you heard a lot of stuff that he's invented, and you notice they were using initially candlelight, afterwards they're using light. So that's just a, one of the examples. This is a picture of a transformer from Tesla's era. And it was used to transform power from high voltage to low voltage so that it can be distributed in your house. And it sat on top of a hydro pole. Not much has changed. This is a very recent picture that I've taken. And if you look at the hydro poles all around the city, you will see those transformers. They are everywhere. This is, of course, Tesla's patent for his motor. All right, so somebody saw something over there on the table. Let's see, anybody know what it is now? I'll go right here. Tesla cord. Tesla cord? Coil. Coil, Tesla coil. That's correct. That's the Tesla coil. This is one of those devices that they talked about. It was being used for wireless communication and transmitting power at very high voltages. So we heard he is best known for all kinds of stuff that he has invented. The motor, the Tesla electric car, he did not invent. The Tesla invent electric car has been invented recently and it is actually powered by a Tesla motor inside. So without the Tesla motor, it won't work, but he's also invented a spark plug. So even though you're running a gas car, it won't work without one of Tesla's inventions. So there's lots of things in there. Unfortunately, Tesla died. Very poor, unrecognized, a great injustice to the man. Let's listen to this one. All right, I got one for you. All right. Who invented the radio? Uh, that's the heart. What do you know? I finally got you. No, it's just that I don't know if you want the person they think invented the radio or the person who actually invented the radio. Well, well in here it says... Marconi, right? Yeah, it ain't it? I don't even want to generally think invented the radio. In fact, we got a Nobel Prize for it in 1909. The truth is, a guy named Nikola Tesla patented the basic idea for the radio in 1896. Same idea Marconi used for his patent several years later. Tesla fought Marconi until the day he died in 1943. 
Same year, the Supreme Court ruled that Marconi's patent was invalid, recognizing Tesla as the inventor of the radio. So, U.S. Supreme Court ruled. That's the highest court in the U.S., of course. And they said, Mr. Marconi, you used 17 of Tesla patents. So how could you claim to be the inventor of radio? That was 1943. Unfortunately, by the time the ruling came down, Tesla had already passed away. So, modern day products depend on Tesla's technology. You all, I showed you a Blackberry, but it doesn't matter, any cell phone. That's dependent, foundation of that technology is laid down by Tesla. Remote controls, you all use remote controls for your phone, for your TVs, and all other kinds of devices. They're everywhere. So if you take a look, you will see something that is linked to Tesla in one shape or form or another. Just look around and listen, listen to this present one. Some of his inventions were ahead of his time. Heck, a few of them are ahead of our time. But some of them, well, let's just say we're standing on the shoulders of giants. Mr. Tesla never got to see his legacy. We'd like to think he'd be pretty pleased. As it says to the mad scientist, inside that car there's more than just a motor. There's all kinds of remote controls. There's radar, everything that you can think of, and it's all rooted in a lot of Tesla's technology. Just as this one points out, Tesla talked about a handheld device that would fit in your pocket, and it'd be just like we're talking, standing next to each other, but we could be talking from anywhere around the world. We're doing that. He just didn't know that it was, at that time it was a cell phone. He had the vision for it. Next wave of technology is really dependent on you. And that's why it's so important for you to understand the root of technology so you can expand technology, all right? Tesla Motor has, Motors has emerged as the leader in electric vehicles, high technology, all right? So we're looking at wireless power transmission, not using any wires to transmit power, but it's important that you need to be a part of that future. All right. A lot of academics are now looking at Tesla's documents and they're trying to understand it. He was so far ahead of his time, he's ahead of our time, we still don't understand all of it. But how about Disney? During the turn of the century, Nikola Tesla had this idea to send wireless power anywhere around the planet. How we wanted to do that was set up a standing electromagnetic wave that would reverberate between the ionosphere and the ground and travel around the world and we'd be able to tap energy out of this. Well, that idea didn't really work out, but it gave us some inspiration for ways to set up wireless power in large spaces. Uh, so what we're going to do is we have a metalized room and we're going to use standing electromagnetic waves that reverberate all around this room providing wireless power to any device inside. Or we can use the Okay, I decided to really, uh, it's getting into a lot of technology there that I don't even understand myself, but I just wanted to uh, give you an indication that who is being inspired, as we saw, Tesla is inspiring Disney, which is interesting, but just keep that in mind. So, what about this? Anybody know who Larry Page is? He's behind Google. How about Steve Jobs? Apple. How about Elon Musk? He's a Tesla incorporator. He's a Tesla electric car. Okay? Now, there's others that are getting inspired as well. In the picture up there, this is a Glendale Secondary School. That's Dr. Colin Campbell in the middle. He's pictured there with some kids in his robotics club. One of the children there on the one on the left 
he went on uh, to win the Nikola Tesla uh, Award at the Bay Area Science and Engineering Fair two years in a row. Incredible uh, knowledge a student has, okay? Tesla's gaining support. As we can see, there's a unit of measurement. So hopefully none of you have had to use one, but, but you, some of you may have heard about it. An MRI machine, it is measured in terms of Tesla units. There's Tesla currency, in Niagara Falls, there's Tesla statue. Tesla is among some of the greatest inventors and minds of all time. Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein, and of course Nikola Tesla. This is the kind of company that he's in with. Then who are we? NTEC, Nikola Tesla Educational Corporation. Our mission is really simple, it's to EI to I, educate, inspire, and that will lead to innovation. So if we educate, if you get educated, you will be inspired, we know it. So we've completed, some of you know Nikola Tesla Boulevard, we've got part of the, the stuff, so we've given awards already, we're working on it, we're working on a public art project that's been approved already, and presentations like this today. Where are we going with this? Well, we want to do more with Tesla to bring it into the schools, into the curriculum. So we'll talk about that, help to organize science fairs, build that public art project, work with innovation. That's what we're all about. So we said, out with the old, in with the new. Burlington Street on the QEW is gone. It's now been replaced with Nikola Tesla. There we go. Our partnership, we work with various organizations. One of them is McMaster University, where we now have a $10,000 scholarship. It is only available to local students. And when I say local, Hamilton, Wentworth, and Halton region, okay? So if you decide to go to McMaster University and study in the field related to Tesla, this is possible. This is our first winner. That's Dr. Purry, the Dean of Engineering McMaster. Malcolm, who is the recipient, or is myself and Dr. Colin Campbell. And all the benefits really are designed for the youth to win. We want you to be inspired. You're going to be the winners and the community in the long term will win because you will be better educated and you will be able to do better, better type jobs. So Hamilton is already a leader in robotics, medical robotics. We are now recognized as a leader in that and that's where we need to continue. What about you? We want you to get inspired. Research Tesla. Look, go on the web, go on YouTube, find books, get, learn more about him. I mentioned BASEF. BASEF stands for Bay Area Science and Engineering Fair. It is for grades seven to 12. So all of you grades sevens and eights are eligible to enter the science fair. And there is lots of prizes. We go there, we give prizes. This is a picture of our 2017 winners. I just want to point out one child. Remember the one I talked to you, I mentioned in the previous picture? He's the one holding the blue shirt. Next to him is another child that has won four Nikola Tesla awards four years in a row. This student, you'll see it. There he is in the next year. He's there again. So this picture was 2018. 2018, he was the second top student at the fair, and he went to the International Science Fair out of 81 countries. He came in fourth in mechanical engineering. He's in grade 10 there. All right, and we found him in grade seven doing wireless power transmission. So, how do we pay honor? Well, when Steve Jobs passed away, the president, U.S. president talked about he's a man with vision and he can make it happen. And what do we do with that one? Well, thanks to Elon Musk, he is uh, running the company, Tesla Motors, and we're hearing a lot more about Tesla. But what can we do locally? Well, the best way you can pay tribute to anybody is to learn about him. So if we start doing that, we will understand all what's happening. And Hamilton, like no other city in North America, is starting to do that, all right? And that's where we've seen all these developments so far. Ontario school curriculum. 
So everything you study, everything your teachers teach you, they have to follow this curriculum. All right? And Hamilton Council has recognized the period 1890 to 1913 is a very critical period for this city. So what's so important? Well, you need to learn about this period in history in grade eight. So let's take a couple of things. 1894, Patterson went to Niagara Falls, New York, and saw the first power generating station under construction using Tesla's power. 1896, they consulted with Tesla. 1897, Westinghouse comes to Hamilton because power is coming to Hamilton. 1898, power arrives here. Hamilton becomes the electric city. And the first decade of the 20th century is an incredible growth period. And we help to define Canada as an advanced society, a center for innovation. So how about a STEM high school? Well, I'll give you just an idea. There's a school in Seattle. It was STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics. In 2014, when all of the grades were there, they asked the kids, what do you think the name of the school should be? And they called it Tesla STEM now, okay? This school is in Washington State. It is the number one school in all of Washington, okay? Uh, ranked 22nd in all US out of 22,000 schools. 100% graduation, no no students stop a dropout. They have they run a, la a lottery to get into there. All right. Just recently, uh, at the Steam and Technology Museum, we held the Hamilton Tesla Electric City Festival, and that celebrated 120 years since power came to the city. Now, do you want to learn more? Well, I hope you do. There is lots of information about Tesla on the internet. This is just a sample of some of the things that you can get there. You can find all kinds of books in our public libraries. All right. This presentation, if you really want to have fun with something, it's called the Tes Nikola Tesla Experience. It's put out by the museum in Delray, and it is a virtual reality. So you download the app onto either your Apple or Android device, and then you can actually, through your phone, go into various so-called little rooms where you have a 3D animation of Tesla explaining a lot of what he has left us behind. So just look for it, it's called the Tesla Experience. Of course, you can buy all kinds of books at Indigo or other bookstores. But let's get to this. I think you'll find this part interesting. We, this, this was filmed shortly after we got this little device. It's called the Tesla coil. You see that there are sparks flying out of it. This will produce sparks up to two feet long. The other thing it does is you see the fluorescent light bulbs next to it. They light up. So it wasn't magic, was it? There is an explanation. It's the Tesla coil. That's what makes it work. Sorry, Milena, you're not that magical. This is the same device. If you can see, it's now turned off. You turn it on, and you see all the lights, how quickly they, they how bright they are. So even the fluorescent tube that I was holding in my hand lights up. That's why when you saw that demonstration, they talked about Tesla was magical when they were holding. That's what was happening. He did that in 1891. Okay, so let's listen to this, this presentation. See the lights that came on? Give it a moment. It also makes crazy sound. Thank you. 
So that was a mini file. So if you take some music, put it through a processor, it comes out as a MIDI file, alters the frequency length and power, and it produces sound like that. Okay, so what do you think? Is that neat? Yeah. Now maybe, maybe we can try something. Yes? Correct. So as you can see here, those are songs that we, we can find all the time. Now let's see if we can zap Mrs. Balta. Or maybe she'll run away so she doesn't get zapped. Run away Mrs. Balta. Run away. Oh, sorry. We're going to try one more experiment. Mrs. Malt is going to plug an extension cord into the potato. You want to throw the potato on the ground? Hold the light. What do you think? If she holds these wires, will this light up? Yeah. Well, now we know the trick. We should have done this one earlier. All right? So it's not. What do you think now? Right? Does that potato and that wire have anything to do with power? Louder, please. All at once. No, that's correct. It has nothing to do with that. So this is Balta. You want to just put the light down? Let's see if we can do a few other magic tricks with this thing. Uh, before I do that, does anybody, and if the answer is no, then you don't worry about it. Anybody wearing hearing aids or have a pacemaker? And if you don't know what those two items are, then no concern. All right, we're good. So, 
the, the point here is that the Tesla coil has thousands of volts, but what it does not have is a lot of amperage. So the amperage is what will kill you if you have a lot of amps coming out and if you touch something. But in this particular case, the amperage is very minute and we will see if these light bulbs light up for them. Move your light bulbs a little further, there you go. Do you see that? They have the power in them. They just turned on light bulbs. You see that? What do you think? Was that cool? All right, kids, you want to put your light bulbs in the box, please? So, does anybody else want to try it? Whoa, look at that interest right now. All right, so this is Volta. Go into the, the other box and pull out the tube. Okay, we have 20 tubes. So I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna say, come on up, come on up, and hopefully we'll get 20 of you. Okay, come on up, come on up. There's, there's room for more. Okay, remember, keep them straight up, do not point them at the coil, all right? Get ready. electricity. Thanks to none other than Nikola Tesla who invented both the Tesla coil and the fluorescent light bulbs that they are all holding right now. So kids, you want to put it down please?
Okay, let me ask you something. Can anybody smell something different in the air? No! Can you smell something a little different? Okay, if you can, that's called ozone. So ozone is produced by the sparking. And ozone is O3. Oxygen is O2, ozone is O3. A lot of people clearly believe ozone is dangerous. However, if it is properly utilized, and Tesla did it, ozone is actually can be used to heal you. So, but it has to be done the right way. So it's not something that's taken lightly. There is clearly elements of that. And guess what? I'm not a doctor, so I can't help you with respect to that at all. I've just read all kinds of stuff on it. So a lot of stuff that I'm telling you, I learned myself on my own. It's not available. It wasn't taught to me in school. I didn't know that Hamilton was the first city with electricity. Attention, please. Okay? So you guys now know that you are in the heart of the most incredible development of the century, or centuries maybe, and it all happened right here in our neighborhood, and it's all around you. Victoria Avenue is not too far, that's where the building is. Westinghouse is just a short walk away from here. All of this happened in here. Get inspired, learn about it. All right, that's the power that you guys now have. Just like I learned, you can as well, and guess what? I'm not an electrical engineer, nor do I know much about all of this technology. I'm an accountant. So anybody can learn about this, anybody can get inspired, and that's what we encourage you to do. Now, well, one of the things that when we had the Best Electric City Festival, we had a company called Stadler's. They gave us a lot of back-to-school supplies. So what we're gonna be doing with these back-to-school supplies, I'm not sure how many we brought or how many are in, in the audience today. We're gonna be uh, talk with your principal and we're gonna leave these supplies through the principal's office and he will, he, they will decide, the teachers and the principal, how to try and distribute some of these things. One of the additional things that we will give you is how to get in touch with us. Uh, Lena, do you have those uh, uh, flyers? We will make, we will distribute these flyers to you. All right, uh, and on the flyers you will learn a little bit of this. You will have our contact information. I hope to see some of you at the Bay Area Science and Engineering Fair. In, at the end of March, you will need to start preparing your projects way in advance. So that's what we do is we encourage you. All right, so on there, if you have questions, we're there. As you can see on this table up here, there's all kinds of textbooks or books that we can talk about Tesla. So if you really want to learn, check out the various books. We are leaving one of these books in your library. This book right here is all just Tesla pack, and that's not all of them. That's just some of them that are in this book, okay? So this book here, as it says, is a thousand and one inventions. Tesla's listed in this book a number of times and all these things that he has invented and given us. So when you get up in the morning and you turn on the light switch, remember without Tesla you wouldn't be turning it. When you reach for that remote control without Tesla you wouldn't be doing it. All of these things are dependent on that and I want you to think how you're going to expand the technology further and further. Yes, I have a question. Energy fields? Yeah, that's the work in all these things as well. You're correct. Okay? So there is a lot of stuff. Anyway, I think our time is up. So I wanna I want you to give yourself a round of applause for being an awesome audience.
I also want to acknowledge those kids who were brave enough and found out that you guys have the power in you. Thank you for demonstrating that you can turn a light bulb on without any wires. And good luck in your education and I hope you take away from today things that will inspire you and start you on your road of learning about Hamilton's Electric City, the five Johns who are brilliant, and of course, the, at the root of it all is the Fulham Thank you.